Next on CBS Sports, the NCAA Basketball Championship. It's a good rule never to dribble when you can pass. The two-handed chest pass is the one most commonly used. The... That's basketball? That might have been okay for the first hundred years, but let's play basketball. Sports presents Prelude to a Championship, sponsored by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. And now, live from Minneapolis, here's Pat O'Brien. Well, it's another championship night in the Twin Cities. Both the good folks here in the upper Midwest have watched the Northern Stars on countless nights. But over the past few months, they've witnessed an unprecedented parade of stars in all the major sports. Tonight, as 51,000 people jam their way into the Metrodome, it all culminates with a showcase for the brightest stars in the college basketball universe. After three weeks and 62 games, only two teams survive. The University of Michigan Wolverines and the Duke University Blue Devils. Tonight, they will play for the NCAA Basketball Championship. Come on in. Yes, tonight, let the madness come to an end. room for one more basketball in? One more good one. Okay, one more game. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, and welcome to a prelude to a championship along with Mike Francesa, who's been my faithful traveling companion along the road to the Final Four. And Mike, we've reached our last stop tonight with Michigan and Duke. Tip time at 22 past the hour, and this trophy is what they're playing for tonight, the big one on the line. And neither side can stand in the way of history tonight, Pat. One team will write it. Duke as a repeat champion, or the fabulous freshman of Michigan, 
who in their own words look tonight to shock the world. Tonight, uh, Steve Fisher's Michigan is uh, looking to avenge an 88 to 85 overtime loss to Duke during the regular season. And for Duke, the stakes are even higher. You see Mike Krzyzewski arriving a short time ago kissing his family off the bus looking awfully serious here you'd think there'd be a couple smiles here but uh, they were very serious get the lipstick off he's going to be on camera all night and he goes into the arena here to do battle tonight Krzyzewski's Blue Devils are within one victory of becoming the first school to repeat as national champion since UCLA in 1973 that incidentally was the year in which all five of the fabulous freshman starters for Michigan were born Right now, let's go down to courtside to check in with our final four roving reporters, Leslie Bister and James Brown. Leslie has been covering Duke, and we'll start there with last year's NCAA champions for whom a big question has to be the health of Brian Davis. Now, you may recall that on this play, early in the second half against Indiana on Saturday, Davis injured his left ankle. You see him going down there, right there. It was initially diagnosed as a high ankle sprain, and as you can see, it left him in a great deal of agony. And here is how he hobbled out on the Metrodome uh, court uh, after uh, he got off the bus and he came in on crutches tonight, walked into the hallway, and Leslie Visser is standing by now. And Leslie, you've been all over this story. What's the latest? Pat, Brian Davis came out for warm-ups. He took a couple of trips up and down the court. He told me he was in a great deal of pain. He went back into the locker room, and he had a special heel lift put in his shoe to cushion the blow. Now, after having ultrasound all day long, he says that a la Kirk Gibson and Willis Reed, he's going to give it a go tonight, although he will not start. He'll be replaced by Grant Hill, who's also nursing an injury, a bruised right knee. That What, what does all of this mean? It means more minutes for Cherokee Park who is Duke's fabulous freshman. For more on the other freshmen, let's go to James Brown. J.B.? All right, Leslie, thank you very much. And Michigan has a little concern about one of its players, specifically 6'9", center Juwan Howard, who's got a case of intestinal flu. Now, Juwan actually started feeling bad in a semifinal game Saturday against Cincinnati, felt the worst yesterday when he lost a lot of fluids and was completely drained. I talked to him a few moments ago. He said he is strong enough, certainly, to play in this championship game. But I think it bears watching him because he certainly should get fatigued as the game wears on. You know, I'm a little surprised at how remarkably calm these freshmen are. Jalen Rose says, we're approaching this game like it's another pickup game. Assistant coach Perry Watson said, this is a case of where being a freshman is serving them well because they're too young to know they're supposed to be nervous. Right now, let's take it back upstairs to never nervous Patrick O'Brien. <laughs> All right, JB, good report, uh, and Leslie. That's the latest on the two teams. Now the question is how they'll match up against each other, and what can we expect in this uh, championship game, Mike? From the Duke perspective, they're experienced, they're sophisticated, they're very versatile. Pat, they have to have Grand Hill step up for the injured Brian Davis because they have to rebound against Michigan. From the Michigan perspective, they have to show maturity on the court. They can't play this game in peaks and valleys, and I don't think they can chase Duke, which means I think Michigan has to play well early because if they get behind, I think they'll try to rush it, and Duke's just too composed and has been in too many games like this. Things to watch for early in the game. We'll be back with more on Michigan and Duke as a prelude to a championship rolls on from Durham to Detroit for primetime hoop fans of all ages here on CBS. Stay with us. Beautiful night here in the Twin Cities, and this year when you look for champions, chances are you've been looking at the Metrodome. This is where Washington crushed Buffalo in Super Bowl 26 back in January, seems like a year ago. And who could forget the Twins stirring seventh game victory in the World Series. And so as the new baseball season opens today, maybe it's only fitting that we, uh, well, uh, make ourselves at home here at the Dome. We're actually on first uh, home plate. This is the one they used in the seventh game, and Dan Gladden's foot is still, the footprint is still on. Hey, he stepped right here, and his next step was in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, while the final four is a familiar place for Duke, Michigan starts four 19-year-olds and one 18-year-old who are only in their second semester of college. We asked the uh, youngsters from both schools what winning the national title tonight would mean to them. It was a dream of mine, you know, growing up watching um, all the NCAA Final Fours with, with the last second shots, you know, Michael Jordan and uh, uh, the great battles between Patrick Ewing and Kim Olajuwon. And, you know, I told my parents one day, you know, I'll be in the 
Final Four winning the national championship and now it's reality. We'll have two national championships under our belt and uh, not many programs have done that. Uh, absolutely no programs have done that, you know, back to back in 20 years or something like that. And that's just outstanding. We haven't been able to enjoy it yet. Uh, we haven't been able to see all the shops with Michigan apparel and see all the fans and things like that. But it's, it's, it's real exciting. It's a dream come true. It would be a dream for me. Uh, I think if we were able to win the national title, it would, uh, we would put ourselves really in a class by ourselves as far as basketball programs and, and things that people have accomplished. You can put it in the water. It'll just be real sweet. Hearts are beating a little faster tonight inside the Metro Dome, and we'll be back with more of Prelude to a Championship in just a moment. Stay with us. Japan, they buy a remarkable new car that comes with 7,041 miles already on it. The Honda Accord from Marysville, Ohio. The best-selling American-made car in Japan. Prelude to a championship. Sponsored by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. Preparing to play for the national title. Doesn't get much better than this. Right now it's time for Mike and me to turn the microphones over to our colleagues Jim Nance and Billy Packer at courtside. Gentlemen, let's make some history tonight. This is going to be a lot of fun, Pat. You're right, and it's great to be standing alongside the man who has called every championship game since 1975. Billy, it's a delight. Thank you, it, Jimmy. 114 days ago, on December the 14th, we witnessed the coming out party, so to speak, of the Michigan Wolverines. It was an overtime thriller, quite simply, and I think there's a chance we have another one tonight. Very possible, Jim. I think in that 114-day span, we might have seen the best regular season college basketball we've ever had. And, of course, I come away with a memory that night of the Michigan club that no longer had potential. They were a club that was going to be a factor all year long. And, of course, Duke proved to be a number one type team. One of the reasons why Jalen Rose, the outstanding guard for the Wolverines, Billy. He was the uh, MVP of the Southeastern region. Uh, comes in here as a great leader, one of the smartest players I've seen come on the college scene in quite some time. A great floor leader, and he's been doing it with his scoring as well. Bobby Hurley is 16-1, and one, quarterbacking the Devils in NCAA tournament play. Well, I thought last year he probably played the best point guard play that we have seen in NCAA tournament play almost in history. This year he's picking up right where he left off. A great winner, a great floor leader. Christian Leitner closes out a memorable college career tonight. Just look at what he's accomplished. Not only the buzzer beaters on two occasions to get them to the Final Four, but the all-time tournament leader in scoring. Free throws made, free throws attempted, number of games played, and the only four-time Final Four starter could even become the all-time steal leader tonight, Billy, in tournament play. Well, here's a key thing for Michigan. They have got to stay in touch with Christian Leitner. Probably be Juwan Howard. Look at the space here on the swinging of the ball by Duke University. What's going to happen is they swing it to Leitner, who can play on the perimeter. There's a whole side cleared out for Christian Leitner. Juwan Howard has to stay closer because when he charges Leitner, Leitner goes by for one of his patented dunks. The Wolverines in the tournament have been able to close the door on the opponent's top score. They've stopped them since the Temple game. Two out of 11 for Kilgore. Look at Byron Houston, the All-America. Two out of 14 with eight turnovers. And Jimmy Jackson under 50% from the floor and nine turnovers. And, of course, here is that leader, a dominant inside player, Chris Weber. Last year, the number one high school player in America. He has not let anybody down in his play this year at Michigan. He is an inside force, Jim. It's Michigan and Duke for the 1992 National Championship. Lineups are next. CBS Sports coverage of the 1992 NCAA Basketball National Championship game is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. The people at Nike who encourage you to just do it. And by Diet Pepsi with 100% aha. Uh -huh. You got the right one, baby. Aha. Uh -huh.
Michigan, a sixth seed out of the Southeast. The first sixth seed in the final since Kansas of 88. And here's their road to the national final. In fact, oddly enough, four of the scores are very similar. And for Duke, East regional champions, including one of the classics, the victory against Kentucky in overtime. And now let's introduce the starting lineup for the honors. Here's Frank Fallon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Metrodome for tonight's national championship game between the Michigan Wolverines and the Duke Blue Devils. And now let's meet the starting lineups. For Michigan at forward, a 6'9 freshman from Detroit, Michigan, number four, Chris Weber. For Duke at forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Mobile, Alabama, number 21, Antonio Lang. For Michigan at forward, a 6'6 freshman from Austin, Texas, number 21, Ray Jackson. For Duke at forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Reston, Virginia, number 33, Grant Hill. For Michigan at center, a 6'9 freshman from Chicago, Illinois, number 25, Jawan Howard. For Duke at center, a 6'11 senior from Angola, New York, number 32, Christian Lakner. For Michigan at guard, a 6'5 freshman from Plano, Texas, number 24, Jimmy King. For Duke at guard, a 6'5 junior from Lancaster, Texas, number 12, Thomas Hill. For Michigan at guard, a 6'8 freshman from Detroit, Michigan, number 5, Jalen Rose. For Duke at guard, a six-foot junior from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 11, Bobby Hurley. And the coach of Michigan in his third season, Steve Fisher. And the coach of Duke in his 12th season, Mike Krzyzewski. go through the Packer points for the championship game. Well, the first thing we're going to see, Jim, is what's going to happen with the chairman of the board. Somebody could control the board tonight. If they do, they're going to win this basketball game. Key for both teams. A case in point. Two great point guards, Jalen Rose and Bobby Hurley. Who gets the advantage in that critical matchup? Number three, the bench warmers and look that's in red because both teams have had great play off the bench throughout this tournament. Can somebody come off that bench as Bosco did the other day or Cherokee Parks? Changing of the guard. Christian Leitner going out as one of the great players in college basketball history. Chris Weber coming in. And the charity strike. Something that gives a big advantage to Duke University. We saw it in the Indiana game. Can they do it again tonight? The officials, Jerry Donahue from Havertown, Pennsylvania, David Libby, San Diego, California, Tom Harrington, Chico, California, and Gene Manji is the alternate from Henrietta, New York. <laughs> Weber and Leitner. And the 1992 championship game is underway. It's going to be King on Hurley to start. Remember the telestrator when we said keep in touch? You notice how Jawan Howard early on in that first game stayed away from Leitner when he on the perimeter. Today, he's right out there with him. As Howard with the ball. He had flu-like symptoms yesterday and stayed in bed. Tough pass inside. Jackson tries to squeeze it over to Weber, and Hill is pounded to the floor. A foul against Weber. Good job of collapsing man-to-man -man by Duke University. It looks like Mike Krzyzewski has decided to put Leitner on Weber. 
put Lang on Howard, figuring that Weber is the guy that can have the big game. Leitner. Hill gets the long rebound. Stripped out of his hands, it belongs to Duke. Grant Hill with three great putbacks for offensive rebounding baskets in the Indiana game was a key to that great run that they had to get back in the lead. Leitner wants to get started on his game after an off Saturday. And there's the mid. Grant Hill, Jalen Rose looks up court. Hill. Good weak side help by Hill, and you can see the perfect lob pass to Jawan Howard inside. Not since UCLA of 73 has there been a repeat champion. In fact, since that time, only three champions, defending champions, have made it back to the final four the next year. UCLA in 74, Billy, right. remember that one lost right. to North Carolina Great State. Great game with NC State. That's and more. Georgetown 85. That's one we thought was in the bag, except for Raleigh Massimino's club upset that one, and of course, last year. UNLV, 91. Yep. And I and now thought yep. that one was in the bag. So it is tough to get back to the top of the championship. Oh. Still looking for the game's first point. Hill will drive to the paint, give it back to Thomas Hill. Hurley inside the Leitner. Stolen away by Weber. Not a good pass by Leitner. Two turnovers by Leitner. Howard has the block. Too strong and another foul inside. It'll be Jalen Rose coming over the back. Teams are a little tight, Jim, to start this ball game. So the first on Rose and the second against Michigan. And you notice what Duke is doing early on here. They're having Bobby Hurley go down low. Let Grant Hill take the ball up on the top. Hurley being a better perimeter shooter. There he is. Thomas Hill on the tip. Duke going to that double low post with... Bobby Hurley stepping out. We know what a good outside shooter he is. Big overplays by Duke. I'd expect Rose to try to dribble Hurley on inside, shoot that leaning left-hander of his. He's now posted up down under the basket, looking for the lob pass. Weber gets around Leitner. Great. Lock, lock, Hill. Grant Hill blocked it, but right back to Michigan. Jackson saved it. Got it over to King. That's a three. Jimmy Jackson lit it up early against Cincinnati. He was the one fella that seemed to have his stroke. Both teams very tentative offensively to start this game. Jim, I'm surprised that Duke doesn't start Leitner down low. Try to get him on a roll with some easy baskets as opposed to playing on the perimeter so much with Howard. Jalen Rose really wanting to post up Bobby Hurley inside. Hurley gives up about eight inches. Rose and Howard in this area. Rose... He traveled. Good switching by Duke on the inside. Now what happens when you take your point guard and take him off the ball to post up inside? It can take the normal flow of your team completely away. It's kind of like trying to foul out a particular player. The rest of the four guys have a tendency to stand around. So see how long Steve Fisher stays with that strategy. Duke is only one for five from the floor. The only basket a tip in by Thomas Hill. 
Lakers are doubled up. Excellent double team. Leaves Lang wide open. And two good players and only one Michigan player under the goal, but right off the fingertips of Lang. They credit the turnover to Leitner, so that's his fourth. Cherokee Parks had such a big game on Saturday. Replaces Leitner. And there's the little discipline move by Mike Krzyzewski. Want Leitner to settle down. Figure he may be too high up for this ball game. And here's where Rose can be more effective. Howard right over Parks. He challenges it right away. bit of tension on the face of Weber enjoying the spotlight he's been smiling since they took the floor savoring the moment early a long range three oh he sets the Duke record with six threes in the victory against Indiana and Jim they were huge threes because Duke was really struggling at that time early tries to make the save but he was on the line First dead ball under 16 minutes. 15-15 to go. First half. 5-5. Five, five. Michigan and Duke. Interesting story for each team. A similar story. There's Freddie Hunter, the captain of the Wolverines. Finally a scholarship player. The second semester of his senior year. Three years ago, he was on the intramural championship team at Michigan. Freddie and the Seven Dwarfs. Hoping to be on the championship tonight, Freddie in the Fab Five. And on the other side, there's Ron Burt, who was one of 38 Duke players trying out for the team on October 15th. A year ago, he was on the Duke Intramural Champions, the dream team. And now his dream with a ring could come true tonight. Jim Leitner back in the game. Mike Krzyzewski just trying to get his head on straight with a little bit of a sit down. Now, this is a better matchup for Duke with the big team, Cherokee Parks, and it allows Curley to play Jackson, who is not a big scorer. Offensive on Weber, and that's his second. He fouled out in the first matchup this year against Duke. And, and you'll see Christian Leitner gets over in front of him. Weber really had an angle, but he pushed off with that inside hand. And Jim, not only did he foul out of that game, we remember what happened in the Southeastern Conference, uh, the Southeast Regional game against Oak State when he had to sit down with foul problems and thought it was all over and his freshman teammates said, hey, we're going to win this one for you in advance. And they did. Yeah, he fouled out of that game in only 18 minutes. So Eric Riley is in for the Wolverines. Replacing Weber. Grant Hill gets it back out last second. Thomas Hill right on the line. Yes. Excellent ball penetration, and that's one of the things that Duke can do with three players around the four. Thomas Hill, Hurley, and Grant Hill himself. I say right on the line, we had the perfect angle on that. You could tell it was good the minute it left his hands. It's a three. He wasn't on the three-point line. Cherokee Park stepping out, doing a pretty good man-to-man -man job on Howard. Matches up with him in size. Howard, good pass to Ray Jackson. Thomas Hill pulls it down, chases it down. Curley makes the move to get by Rose. Pull up three, he's off the mark. Oh, that was, again, Grand Hill at 6'8", doing the job on the offensive boards. Leitner, wow. And stood still and watched the shot, Jim, after he missed it. And a steal by King. First six minutes of this game, Christian Leitner's in a total funk. Right over late oh, they score. Eric Riley. We talked about some hot bench warmers. And Steve Fisher has been able to look down that bench. He must look in their eyes to figure out which one's hot. Because as soon as he puts them in, they produce. Skip pass to Hill. Good defense by Rose. Yep. Parks pushed off for position. That's his first and the second against Duke. Nice defensive job by Riley to be in perfect position. And look at who's going to try to make an appearance here. One of Saturday's heroes comes in from Michigan, Bosco. And here is Brian Davis, the senior co-captain 
with the high ankle sprain. It's the first start he missed all senior season tonight. Antonio Lang is also back into the lineup for Duke after a short rest. Let's check out Davis. He's guarding King on this possession. Jimmy King ought to test him right away and see if he can beat. There he goes. See if he can get with him on the drive. Riley bounces it in. Good pass. Score the basket. Foul against Hurley. And Howard will shoot one. Excellent two-man inside game by Raleigh, who last year was the Big Ten's number two rebounder and Big Ten's number two shot blocker. This year finds himself on the bench because of that man, Howard, but certainly delivering. Perfect play. Bobby Hurley had no opportunity coming over from the weak side. It's been the year of Howard's at Michigan. First it was Desmond claiming college football's biggest prize, and now Jawan Howard trying to get college basketball's championship ring. Leitner throws it away to Rose. Jim, that is Leitner's fifth turnover of the game. No points, five turnovers. He's going to have to get himself moving, and if you're Bobby Hurley, you ought to let him touch the ball a lot to get out of this funk he's in. Still no time. And he's not following his shot either. He's shooting and standing and just looking at it. Three pointer by Rose. In and out, and Lang has it. Duke pushes it up. Oh, the hill. And wow. knocked away. And for a second, Billy, it looked like Duke was trying to come back and replay a same kind of dunk from a year ago in the first half against Kansas as one of the best in championship history. But a good play by Vasco getting over there. He was the guy that was the difference in the game the other day against Cincinnati. Leitner now driving ah! off the glass, and he gets started with his first two. And with Chris Weber on the bench, it's important that they get Leitner on track. Howard already put the ball on the floor once. Five it's seconds. a five count. He couldn't dribble with it. I don't think his teammates realized that you see he's signaling they had already taken one dribble. An official's timeout with 11.42 to go first half. Wolverines by a bucket. Broadcasting legend Kaywood Ledford calling his final game tonight for CBS Radio. The voice of the Kentucky Wildcats. Let's listen in. Well, it has to be a very sore ankle. will inbounds the ball. Well, the, the real problem when you have an ankle as sore as he, as he has, he can't make quick cuts to the basket, so I don't think he'll be as effective. If he can react, then he can have be a, a, a somewhat of a factor in this game. Hurley working around the top of the key. Can't get through. Gives it off to Thomas Hill. We can just call him Hill now because... Uh, Grant is on the beach. They go inside to Leitner. And Leitner trying to throw it back outside. Throws it away. Rose driving. alley -oop. Tough shot by King. Turnovers. Michigan has 11. And they've gotten probably about six of those off of uh, Leitner's turnover. 14 to 10. Hurley drives to the right side. Going inside. Here is Lang. And he is fouled by Howard. As he tried to reverse layup, Howard got him. That is Howard's first number four against the Wolverines and we will put Antonio Lang on the line. Among the Duke starters, he is the poorest free throw shooter, 66% coming into this game and he's looking for his first score of the game right here. He'll get two shots. Michigan has been to the free throw line three times, made one. This will be Duke's first two. Michigan with a four-point lead, 14 to 10. Antonio Lang Puts up the first of two. No good. And boy, it was a brick. Oh, boy. He pounded the backboard with that one. The only chance it had was to bank in off the board. He didn't make it. <laughs> Lying back on the strike. Shots up. Rattles a rim, but it stays in there. 14 to 11. And Duke goes to a full court press for the first time. With the ball is Riley. Puts down a dribble. Shows some... Oh, he throws a bad pass. After the trap got him, he leaped into the air, committed himself to Kaywood Ledford. Our best well, wishes to Kaywood, working the game on CBS Radio with Quinn Buckner. And you know, Billy, when Duke knocked out Kentucky in the East Regional Final, Mike Krzyzewski and all that pandemonium went over to the Kentucky broadcast setup, got himself a spare headset, 
as Hill hits Thomas Hill. And wish Haywood Leffert all the best in his retirement. A class move by Mike Krzyzewski on what had to be a disheartening moment for Ledford, who thought he might be going back to the Final Four with his Kentucky team. Of course, the last time a Kentucky team played in the Final Four here was the only one ever held in Minneapolis, 1951, and they came away with a victory. There's Hurley with a breakaway. Picks up the loose ball and takes it to the glass for two. Those are the days of Adolph Rupp, Bill Spivey, Cliff Hagen. Hurley on a hand check. And that's two on Hurley, four on Duke in the first half. You can see Weber out with two fouls. Now Hurley's going to have to sit. There's Hurley splitting everybody on defense. Bosco stays with him. I thought Bosco gave him a push right there and got by with it. No call by the official. Hurley scored anyway, so Hurley has to sit. Weber has to sit, so two of the key players in our matchups are on the bench with foul trouble. And Leitner in a situation where he has one basket and six turnovers. Ryan Davis is defending Howard. Here's the matchup. Howard shoots it over him for two. What about Ryan Davis from what you've seen so far, Billy? Well, he's able to get up and down the court, but I don't see any movement out of him with, in regard to quickness at all. That'd be anticipated. I have never seen Duke turn the ball over quite as much as they are today. Very uncertain in their offensive set. And a lot of that be the fact, I think, that Christian Leitner has not taken over on the offensive end. Early right back in after a quick blow, and Brian Davis sits. Nine turnovers for Duke, but Duke trails by only a point. Jim, I'm going to go back to the Indiana game where I thought it was not a smart move by Duke to have Christian Leitner play that entire second half and basically take no shots and not touch the ball. He has not gotten in sync at all with their offense. These two clubs met in the opening of, of a se in the semifinal game in 1964, the year UCLA started the great run with Hazard and Goodrich to beat Michigan that particular year. And then, of course, UCLA beat Duke for the championship. Grant Hill gets the pass, though, right off the hands of Leitner. King loading, missing. Thomas Hill lost it for a moment. Snatches it back. His fourth rebound. They clobber Grant Hill. He'll go to the line for two. Jim, if there's any huge difference between these two teams, it is the charity stripe. In the case of Michigan, they have made 58 less free throws than their opponents and shot 35 less. Duke has, ma has made 290 more free throws than their opponents and shot 450 more. So a great imbalance in regard to the number of times these teams go to the line. A lot of that is orchestrated by the way their coach forces play on transition and with penetration to get there. Two for Hill as we look now at uh, the support graphic, Billy. Free throws for Duke. You can see. You can see they're averaging 32 a game. And again, 26 more free throw attempts than Indiana on Saturday. That foul was against James Bosco. Now with Weber back in the game, one of the things that he has got to really be careful is on the offensive glass, not going over somebody's back. Rob Polinka has come in for Michigan. He was a member of the 89 Wolverine championship team. Here he is, Polenka. Remember who took the shot at the end of the game? Duke up in the Michigan. It was Polenka off the bench. In his first action, they brought him in at the last minute. An outside shooter. That foul against Grand Hill. And his first and Duke's fifth. Billy, I know you want to send out some best wishes tonight to Frank McGuire. He's a Hall of Famer. He suffered a stroke today. 78-year-old coaching legend. And, of course, he led North Carolina to one of the all-time greatest triple overtime victory over Kansas and Will Chamberlain for the national championship for the Tar Heels. 19, we wish him well. 1957. Right. Triple OT in the semis. Triple OT in the finals. And Weber will have one more. And here's Chris Weber having foul, trouble, foul shooting trouble once again. Shooting a little bit now under 50% on the year. Oh. And 
and the two leaders for Duke University on the bench, Davis and Leighton. Mike Krzyzewski has seen about all of Leitner he wants for this period of time. He's just not getting it done. Ah! Early, Parks tries to tip it in. Gives Michigan a chance with the numbers. Rose comes from the other side, and he'll step to the line for two more. You know, if anybody ever sees Jalen Rose in practice, you would think that he could never turn on the afterburner, but we saw him right there just explode to the basket. Thomas Hill, Billy, with his second. In the act of shooting, Rose will shoot two. Ryan Davis, he's tested the ankle and... Uh, Able to provide some minutes tonight for the Devils, replacing Thomas Hill. Jalen Rose, a year ago, led Southwestern High School to the state championship in Michigan. Same school that produced Anderson Hunt and his high school coach, Perry Watson, now on the staff for Steve Fisher. Watson, of course, incredible leader. Two state championship teams there. Incredible overall record was picked as the National High School Coach of the Year, and they were the number one team in high school basketball a year ago. Three points for Rose as the all-time Michigan freshman scoring mark. Surpassing Mike McGee at one stage of this tournament. 18-17 Michigan. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. Parks wide open at the free throw line. Good step out by Cherokee Parks who came in and did a great job against Indiana picking it up right where he left off. The Michigan players have to realize Davis doesn't have good mobility. They need to put the ball on the floor and drive by. King wildly and Hurley pulls up. Sharp play by Bobby Hurley. He realized he did not have the numbers, therefore don't go all the way to the basket. Pulls up and takes a jumper. Rose stopped his dribble. They've got oh, a double up. Foul, sure. Yep, they call it on Jalen Rose. He had nobody coming to the ball. He picked up his dribble at the worst place, right, right as he crossed half court. Jalen upset. There's no question he's the fellow that committed the foul by using his elbow to split the defense. His second team foul number six. An official's timeout. And the Devils have a three-point advantage. Back in the Metrodome, at least one famous father skipped work today. Calvin Hill, the former All-Pro running back and father of Grant, is also the vice president of the Baltimore Orioles, but he was not at Camden Yards today for the opener against Cleveland. He said he has 161 other games to catch the Orioles, only this chance to see his son. Jim? You certainly understand the pride of Grant Calvin Hill. Leitner trying to get on track. And I think they're going to have to set some screens for him because people are playing behind him. His shot's not going down. He's got to get some easy ones. He is now one for five with six turnovers. Rose in and out. Good Bounce, dish. Bounces to Grant Hill. And Davis, without that 100% speed, unable to challenge the Wolverines. Look at this pass. Weber feels it. Look time. Well, Jim Davis just can't finish. Jalen Rose. N normally, Davis is one of the best slashers and finishers in college basketball. Had no chance to do that there. And well, back of the rim. Leitner has it taken out of his hands. And Rose just had one beautiful assist. He looked for another. Finding Howard as the trailer. And Jim, you know what really concerns me about Christian Leitner? Now, it's one thing to be having a, a bad game, which he is having, but he didn't hustle that time. The ball hit off Howard. He stood at the other end of the floor. Mike Krzyzewski's going to have no patience for that. At one time this year, he was down 19 points but to Clemson, and he took his starters out and let the subs go ahead and get it back in there. Ask the starters if they really wanted to play. Now that... That was that Howard. Potential. Howard throwing him to the floor. Leitner in the act of shooting will shoot two. That's for Howard, his second. No. How about this pass, Billy, from Rose? Great pass, great catch, an excellent finish. And there goes that motion by Chris Weber. Now, think it, you know, when you throw a guy right to the floor like that, to me, that is an intentional foul. 
Billy, if it seems like Christian Leitner has been on the college basketball scene longer than any other player, it's only because it's true. He's played in more tournament games, and with this one tonight, it's his 148th game at Duke, and he passes Danny Manning for the most games ever played in college. Well, Danny Manning, in his final game, put a team on his back and carried him to a championship. So far, Christian Leitner is not getting that done. Of course, you can't fall them in one respect. Without him, they wouldn't be here. Lang in for Leitner. He passed Elvin Hayes, the Big E, although he's had numerous more opportunities, Billy, than Hayes had in the tournament. Manning, the third all-time score. But he has a chance also to become the all-time steal leader. Beat Mookie Blaylock yeah. if he can get two of those. Hurley would have the numbers again. Palenka went down. Driving past King. Loose ball. Lang in there. Oh. Weber just takes it away. How about that dribbling ability of Chris Weber? How about the oh. behind the back and Palenka score at the foul. Some sensational dribbling by Chris Weber on both halves of the court. And then what a feed. I said at the top of the show we may be seeing the changing of the guard and that certainly was done with some emphasis there was no foul on that play a Duke player had his hand caught in the net so it would have been basket interference had Polinka missed but Rob Polinka off the beautiful pass from Weber gives Michigan a two-point lead Hill right back trying to tie it. Weber on the line Weber's dribbling just to get free of the good defense with something, and then when he puts it behind his back, Polinka with a 360, and the reason for the whistle, as you pointed out, Jim, it would have been goaltending had it not gone in anyway. You see how it just picks up this Michigan team when Weber does something sensational. Off the screen, Hurley kicks it over. Thomas Hill, short. 44, Cherokee Parks pushing. A moment ago, Krzyzewski dealing with Christian Leitner. Jim, I've only seen Mike Krzyzewski get on Christian like that once before, and that was when the team was getting ready to go up to play in the World Games. And he got in his face something serious there. It looked like, if you could read the lips, it looked like he said, you walked to the ball. Parks goes out now with two fouls, having committed the one on Weber. Chris Weber, of course, we saw him in the first game against Duke. 11 for 15, 12 rebounds, 27 points. Oh, what a leap by Hill. Well, that was a vertical leap, 30-some inches. He has five rebounds. Under five to play in the first half. Leitner, after the pep talk, off the mark. Well, Jim, see how he's shooting and standing still? He's not following his shot. But the he hits put the back, and looks at it. The put back by Grant Hill. Good ball handling by Howard. And dishes on the baseline. Weber missing. Rose follows. No blocked out on the wing by Bobby Hurley. But excellent ball handling by Howard and Weber. Grant Hill wants the baseline and uses the glass to perfection. Six for Grant Hill. Nobody glides in any better than he does to the basket. Back screen that time, Howard almost had it. Zip it home. And no block out on the inside. Mike Krzyzewski saying Hurley got pushed off. No call. Good switch by Chris Weber. Roy glides past Weber this time. Does Grand Hill three consecutive baskets for Grand Hill. 
Jim Weber made the switch that time, and he was looking for some help on the inside. But Howard has the position. He's working Leitner over inside. Rose over the top. Leitner's second rebound. And here he is walking down the court again. Curling. Lang with the loose change. Jim Leitner never crossed half court on that possession. You don't know if he's sick, but he certainly is a major story in this first half. And for Duke on the negative side. Turnover by Michigan. And watch Leitner, Billy. Jim, see. Jim, here he is. You have nine guys. He'd normally be under the boards battling. Look, he's up over at half court. Nine men down on the other end of the offensive end of the court. An official's timeout. Over 50,000 inside the Metrodome with two minutes to go in the first half. Billy, the game summary. To this point, your kind thoughts? Of, well, kind of interesting. Duke is getting the job done on the boards, and even though they're hitting the offensive boards, they can't get the putbacks because Michigan filling right in on them. Good block out by Grand Hill. Smart play. Here's some numbers now to support what you were talking about. Field goal percentages, Duke under 40%. Duke with 11 turnovers, Leitner with six of those. Being guarded now by Riley. Doubled up. Use the left hand. Strongest move, perhaps, of the two games in Minneapolis. Yeah, when a guy's having a bad game, a big man, it's good to get him down in the low post and get him the ball to get some confidence back. He's been playing so much on the perimeter. When you're not hitting your shot, that's tough for a big fella. Remember Freddie Hunter? We told his story how he was on the intramural champs. Here he is in the game now. Oh, he throws it away. Hill stole it. Made a great play, actually, to deny Jimmy King. Leitner thought he might challenge Riley. He's he looking to get in the low post. There he is. Hill has to just throw it right into the hands of Oscar. That was another no, bad pass. It was. And Leitner put Hill on a disadvantage there. Good hedge by Lang. Now he's got to stay with it. Rose up high. So smooth. Uh, Jalen Rose, such a smart basketball player. When he saw the hedge taking place by Lang stepping out, he forced Lang to take him, and Lang can't stay with his dribble. Duke kids look very tired at this point in the game. He's going to hold it for the last shot of the half. And Steve Fisher's not coming out to play him. Duke has its starting lineup on the floor for the last possession of the first half. There is actually a one-second difference. Jim, I think that Duke is much more effective in this set when, when Hill takes it inside because he can play over bigger people, but it's going to be Hurley this time. Hurley gets the motor look running for, at look 10. Look for Thomas Hill on the double screen. Here he comes. Hurley driving on King. Leitner outside. Makes the head fake. Leans in off the glass. No, back of the rim. And Michigan will go to the locker room with a one-point lead. First half with the score, Michigan 31, Duke 30, and CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the 1992 NCAA Basketball National Championship game is sponsored by Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships. AT&T, proud sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. And by UPS, offering 1030 guaranteed overnight air delivery. The Prudential at the half is sponsored by The Prudential. In a changing world, one thing remains rock solid. The Prudential. Inside the Metrodome, the Wolverine.
Greens of Michigan lead the Duke Blue Devils 31 to 30. And the story tonight so far has been Christian Leitner. He comes here, folks, as Superman after that big game against Kentucky. And tonight he is suffering again after having a poor game on Saturday. Into the locker room he goes. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien along with Mike Francesa. Welcome to the Prudential at the half. What is wrong with Christian Leitner? I think that's the question a nation of basketball fans are asking. I think the Duke coaches are asking the same question. Pat, two of eight, lethargic play. Looks unsure every time he handles the basketball. I don't know the answer. I don't even know if they know the answer. Sure, they're trying to find out tonight Absolutely. right now in the locker room. Well, the national championship is the most fitting time for us to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Dr. James Naismith's invention of the game of basketball. Curry Kirkpatrick, who covers college hoops for Sports Illustrated magazine and CBS Sports, takes us for a nostalgic spin down memory lane. Happy birthday, basketball. Once you were conceived in peach baskets, now you've grown into domes. Once you embraced the Wonder Five, now every team has five players of wonder. Born in Hawaii in Springfield, Mass., the good Dr. Naismith delivered you to Kansas to another legendary coach, Fog Allen. Dr. Naismith, he could sit in this room right here all day long, and you would never know he'd invented the game because he would never tell you. 100 years ago, Naismith perceived basketball as a game between nine-man teams with no dribbling, no pivoting even, and a jump ball after every basket. Is that weird or what? Of course, if the old doctor were alive today to see basketball, he'd ask the same type of questions. Like, what is the deal with this net? And what else have you done to my game? From ancient gyms to prolific jams. But back in time, a coach, Henry Iba, relied not on dunks, but on centers. Foothills Bob Curlin of Oklahoma A&M and monstrous George Mikan of DePaul began the legacy of the battling giants. They called us goons and all those kind of things. But we proved that through uh, proper uh, instructions, we were able to compete. And the torch is passed from coast to coast, from the redhead Bill Walton, who taught the real deal, Shaquille O'Neal. The more basketball changes, the more it remains the same. Lucetti of the running one-hander begat Cousy of the behind-the-back pass, who begat Oscar of the glorious all-round game. Legendary Bearcat to anonymous Bearcats. Morning, today, tonight. Coach K of the volatile to Coach K of the serene, who despite all of Duke's final fours, can never shake bitter rival North Carolina, whose coach is another dean, who learned this grand game from a familiar fog, who got it straight from the hands of the doctor. Back in Springfield, they paved paradise to put up a parking lot, from whose corner kids dribble the dream into another old gym a few blocks away. Here, one of their own, Travis Best, once practiced so that he could play in this year's tournament. Having the Basketball Hall of Fame right in my own backyard, it's been um, a real key for me, um, you know, learning the game, um, you know, and, and experiencing some of the, the history that's gone on in basketball. For Naismith's hometown kid to someday win Naismith's trophy would be a wonderful fit. For now, our children are the joyous links of a chain, the best birthday present a game could ever wish for. Here's to you, Hoops. Have another happy hundred. Curry Kirkpatrick, CBS Sports. We want to credit a big assist for that piece to the Basketball Hall of Fame up in Springfield, Mass. If you haven't been there, you should visit that. When we come uh, back here, we'll check in on the Michigan and the Duke locker rooms. Leslie Visser with the report on Christian Leitner as at the half rolls on for all the grateful heirs of Dr. Naismith's legacy. Stay with us, folks. It began not with a clean sheet of paper, but with a 75-year history. A history of building automobiles that make the most of the driver's skill. Because how you drive is as important as what you drive. 
BMW introduces a car that could improve both. The BMW 325iS Coupe. The RCA projection screen is so big, you'll feel like part of the show when you watch the RCA home theater. It also has Dolby surround sound that's so real... Stand back, everyone. ...you'll forget you're sitting at home. Let me handle this. The RCA home theater also has picks in picks. It lets you watch two things at once, in color. Another way RCA is changing entertainment again. The NCAA Final Four moves to the Louisiana Superdome in 1993. For information to obtain an official ticket application, write the NCAA at this address or call 1-900-646-1993. Ticket recipients will be selected from a random drawing of applications. Call 1-900-646-1993. $1 for the first minute, 50 cents each additional minute. Applications must be received by April 30th, 1992. This message provided by the NCAA. Remember the excitement of the 1992 NCAA Final Four with the official souvenir program. To receive your copy, send $8 to Final Four Program, 904 North Broadway, Lexington, Kentucky, 40505. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. This I can guarantee you, none of those 51,000 people, including the bands, are leaving here tonight. Michigan leads by one point at the half in the championship game. And welcome back to the Prudential at the half. Time now to check in with our roving reporters. Let's begin with Leslie Visser, who is standing outside the Duke locker room. Leslie? Pat, the folks at Duke say there is nothing physically wrong with Christian Leitner, that Michigan is doing an effective job of double-teaming him. The coaches, however, do want Christian to make better decisions down low, that when he is double-teamed to kick the ball out, and as they advised him against Indiana, they want him to pick some different spots on the floor. They also would like to see a little bit more of an emotional, I think maybe a little emotionally exhausted, they'd like to see more out of him there. But as for now, nothing physically wrong with him. If, if Duke is to repeat as champion, though, they think he has to shake his emotional exhaustion and have a big second half. So what's up with Michigan? Let's go to James Brown. All right, Leslie, thank you very much. The Michigan coaching staff was not alarmed coming up the stairs at all when they went into the locker room at halftime, but that's a part of their continuing philosophy not to unnecessarily upset the youngsters to talk to them calmly and rationally. But there is reason to be alarmed when you consider that Duke is out-rebounding Michigan. They've turned the ball over more than Michigan. They're shooting poor from the floor than Michigan and only trailing by one. So there is reason for major concern because Duke does a great job of adjusting in the second half. The major adjustment for Michigan, per the coaching staff, is for Jalen Rose to be more active on the offensive end to initiate things because the rest of the team takes his cue from him. Right now, let's go back upstairs to Pat O'Brien. All right, JB, Leslie, what do you think? I think Duke will pick up the defensive intensity right out of the box, and number two, we're going to find out just how tough mentally Christian Leitner is in the second half. No kidding on that one. Well, the Wolverines or the Blue Devils are one half away from the national title. We'll find out as we rejoin Jim and Billy when our exclusive coverage of the NCAA championship continues here on CBS after a message and a word from your local station. Enjoy the second half, everybody. Prudential at the half was sponsored by the Prudential. In a changing world, one thing remains rock solid. The Prudential. Basketball National Championship game is sponsored by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks more people depend on. Reebok, who asks who is the world's greatest athlete, Dan or Dave? And by Pizza Hut, home of the new Pepperoni Lovers Pizza, with 25% more pepperoni. Michigan 31 to 30 at halftime. You nine delicious choices, just 99 cents each. CBS Sports coverage of the 1992 NCAA Basketball National Championship game is sponsored by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks more people depend on. Reebok, who asks, who is the world's greatest athlete, Dan or Dave? And by Pizza Hut, home of the new Pepperoni Lovers Pizza, with 25% more pepperoni. 
Michigan 31 to 30 at halftime. A close first half, four ties, 12 lead changes, and the largest lead at any one time was four by Michigan. Hey, Michigan was very late coming out here. Yeah, for the there, second were, half. there were only about 40 seconds of warm-up time for, for Michigan. I looked at the referees. They said they have never been in a situation where neither team was on the floor when they came back out. The story, obviously, was the first half what was Christian Laker and I think back you know you talked about his great stats 24 against Alonzo Mourning in the tournament 28 against UNLV great games against against Shaq O'Neal tremendous game against Kentucky this fella is certainly capable it'll be interesting to see how he responds and what is going to be the last half of his collegiate career what's your gut feeling will he have a big half yeah, after what I saw in the first half, Jim, which really shocked me because I've seen him throughout his four-year career. I've never seen anything like that before at any time in any game. Good cut by King. King couldn't handle it, though, and Duke has the numbers. Back to Leitner. They get him started right away. Well, if you're going to get a big man started, get him down low. That was a good cut by King. He just couldn't handle the pass. Solid screen, looking for the lob to Howard. He's got good post position. Flips it over, half hook. And Michigan, Michigan back in front by one. Lang has got to recognize when he's going to be back screen like that. Leitner, he wants the jumper, and he hits the three. His first shot really from the outside. He may be ready to answer that question. Off the fingertips of King. And there's Christian Leitner beating everybody down court, getting back down in position. Teammates cheering them on, cheering on their captain. Hey, Mike Krzyzewski said, let's get the ball to the big guy. Hurley brings it over to Leitner's side now. He'll go across. Clear out. As Hill drives baseline. Jalen Rose couldn't handle Hill on the clear out. Nine for Thomas. Duke has its largest lead, a four-point lead. Weber challenging Laker, missing the hook. Howard, who did not score in the first half. I mean, did not get a rebound in the first half. That was his first one of the game. Right by Laker, Weber scoring. And he'll shoot one. You know, I think he is so effective. I mentioned the first game we did this year, he reminds me so much of James Worthy. Worthy with that great shot drop step he has in a low post. And you can see he is by Leitner before Leitner even can react. Second foul on the Watch end of this play, Billy, by Grant Hill. Watch that quick reverse. Second time tonight, Weber's gone around him. So quick. In the first game, Weber dunked on Leitner, and they talked a little bit. He said... You've just been dunked on on national television. Leitner came back and later dunked on Weber and said, that's how you do it, little kid. They talked a lot on that first one. Really. Well, there hasn't been much conversation at all tonight, which kind of surprised me. Look at him driving. Leitner gets caught, gets it out to Hill. Great box. Blocked by Jackson. Early trying to draw a foul on that play. Howard no has call. the rebound. Early didn't try to make that shot as much as he tried to get Rose to foul him. Leitner's fourth rebound. Up ahead to Hill. Fouled with the body by Jackson. Again, every time I see that, Billy, I think back to the Hurley to Hill combination last year against Kansas. The dunk that will be played, replayed for years to come. The one you compared to David Thompson. Related to David Thompson, which took it all the way back to 1974. Thomas Hill. Short. There's a push off inside. Is that Rose's third? Well, Gary Donahue signals it's on Rose, his third. And what they're doing to Jalen Rose right now is setting him up for one-on-one -on -one moves against him because he's matched up with Hill. Steve Fisher's got a decision to make. It could be Tally coming in off the bench. Steve Fisher coaching his 100th game at Michigan. Thomas Hill to the line for two. One of three starters in the championship game from the state of Texas. 
Rose. Weber has fouled out of five games this year, but Jalen Rose, with all of his responsibilities, has not fouled out one time this year. So, although Steve Fisher's contemplating a move, he keeps walking on the sidelines trying to figure out what to do. The guy's been weaving a magic wand in NCAA tournament play with 12 and one record. He's got a decision to make now. James Bosco checks in for Michigan for Rose, who will sit with the three. Now, let's see if Duke starts to press. With Rose out of the game, it'd be excellent time to press because now you've got Jimmy King as the primary ball handler. Good move by Mike Krzyzewski. Lang point comes over point. to double up. King, two-pointer, had a foot on the line, and Leitner has the rebound come right to him. Lang, bouncing it into Hill. Oh, that's three on Weber now. Three on Weber, three on Rose. A repeat of the Indiana situation where four players fouled out and Duke put them in a very precarious position on that great run they made in the second half by going to the charity stripe time and time again. Weber had looked like mostly all ball on the play. But his third, and Thomas Hill back to the line. Billy, I mentioned a, a moment ago that three starters from the state of Texas were pickup games in the Dallas area at the Redbird Gym south of Dallas just this past summer. Jimmy King, Thomas Hill, Larry Johnson. <laughs> if you think about it, Shaquille O'Neal, the players that have come out of the state and have left the Southwest Conference, it's alarming. Now here, here you can see what Steve Fisher's doing. He's playing the percentages. He comes back with Rose, who has three, but he knows that Rose has been very good at being able to protect himself and not falling out, where Weber has not. And he knows he can't have both of them sitting at this key juncture in the game. Oh! Howard on the rebound for his third rebound, all in the second half. Riley posting up Leitner. Leitner comes over to help out on King. Good rebound. And Lang starts the break. Leitner on a wing. Hurley gets it back to him. Slipped out of Leitner's hands. King was on the line. Another great event starts Thursday night on CBS Late Night Highlights. The first round of the Masters, both Thursday and Friday night. Weekend coverage coming your way as well on CBS. But you can see they want to get the ball to Thomas Hill down there. He's got Rose on him, and he's trying to post it. Lang couldn't handle it. Jackson ahead to King. King's going to dunk on him. Yes. The Duke was so anxious to get the ball to Thomas Hill, hoping to pick up Rose's fourth, that they got out of their offensive sink. It's time now to go back to Christian Leitner in the low post. 39-37, Duke, 16 minutes to go. Grant Hill slips it in to Lang, and Duke dunks right back on Michigan. Third time today that Grant Hill has taken him with that floater on the baseline. by Rose, he's got the drive. Howard, after a couple of dribbles, ball tipped around to Grant Hill. Good defensive balance by Michigan. Thwarted any opportunity to get the break. Next immediate double team. Three pointer is short, way short. Dead ball under the 16-minute mark. An official's timeout in the national championship game. The Metrodome opened 10 years ago this week with a Twins game, and now it's the third largest house to a college basketball game. The Superdome in New Orleans, next year's Final Four site, has the top five attendance figures of all time. The Astrodome is next, and then the Metrodome. Billy, 
take it away with the game so well you look right there it's pretty even all the way around Leitner looking a little better here in the second half and what Steve Fisher has done is said, I've got to come back now I can't let Duke open up any margin so he's come back with both Rose and Weber both have three fouls on him left-handed clear out for Rose Hurley does a nice job on defense Riley he's hit one turn around not this time and a push off on Leitner Weber and Leitner could have been called either way as they were both battling for position but Weber had the inside. It was an anxious moment there for yep. Steve Fisher, but Leitner is whistled for his first and only the second of the second half against Duke. Ray Jackson inbounds. Take it back out to King. Riley. And it's swept away right back, Riley. It should have been a jump ball situation. It was blocked, and he caught it, and then came down. Sets the screen for Hurley oh, no. with the left hand. Weber knocks oh, it out Riley, of the pack. What a play by Riley. Strong rebound. Just as he came up with a huge game against Oklahoma State, he's in there today. He's got Hurley down in the low post. And he pushed off. Riley. Yep. Great acting job by Bobby Hurley. Riley had him pinned down inside. He wasn't patient enough. That's his first. Michigan's fourth team foul of the half. Cherokee Parks in for Duke. And Brian Davis comes in. Lang out. Brant Hill out. Tim, the thing that's interesting about Brian Davis, we saw him try to loosen up that ankle before the game. And he didn't have an opportunity, obviously, to loosen it up because Duke was only out for about 30 seconds of warm-ups to start the second half. Let's see if it's really tightened up by now. There's a switch. Doubled up Leitner. Well, see, Parks is not going to be played from there. Riley's going to fall back in on Leitner. They wanted to get something down inside with Parks and Leitner in a double low post. Ten on the shot clock. Davis wide open. Riley snags it for Michigan. His fourth. Rebound. some help. Weber thinks he can take Cherokee Parks with a dribble. Must beat the shot clock. Oh, well, they got a little too frenetic at the end of that, and Rose dribbles it off his leg. Now, what Mike Krzyzewski going to do? He comes right back with Grant Hill, and he says to Brian Davis, thank you very much for giving me 30 seconds that I needed, young man. And even though he missed that jumper, I think Mike Krzyzewski felt he just had to give Grant Hill arrest. I'll tell you, a guy who could have given him some minutes tonight is Billy McCaffrey at 16 in last year's final. Hurley oh, missing the layup. Oh, Leitner on the follow. No, Parks. Oh. Go That's another line. one on Rose. That's his fourth. Great follow plays on the inside by Cherokee oh, Parks. Five, and, and what Jay, what Jalen Rose is saying to me is replay that one see if that was my foul and you know what that one might have been not the first one and he's got to come out of there now it's got to be tally coming in and it is going to be that was a great defensive effort the last possession of Michigan's on behalf of Duke just took away every shooting opportunity Parks and Leitner talk he's the heir apparent to Leitner's position and what a way to burst onto the college scene by making your first 11 field goals in college that's what Parks did and now Tally comes in and Rose out with the four fouls Jim Parks another one of those super recruits of McDonald's High School All-American eight of the ten kids that started tonight were McDonald's High School All-Americans so when you wonder where that talent pool is coming from that would be a perfect example you don't get here if you don't have players. Riley 
really backed in on Parks and then pinned the ball to the floor, but they get the whistle now against Hurley, his third. Well, remember the occasion where Riley was patient was impatient and the foul was called on Raleigh. This time, Raleigh just stayed with it and they picked up Hurley. So that's pretty even trade off. Duke leads it 43 39 with 12 30 to go. Nice thing. Nice thing. Too strong on the shot. Weber with the rebound to kick it out to Tally. Short on the three. Tapped again to Tally. Bounces it right into the hands of Davis, who returns. And you notice Davis said to Bobby Hurley, no fast break. This game has been lacking almost completely of any transition basket. Jim, you said it right. It's like a heavyweight boxing match by two old heavyweights that are just slugging at each other, neither one able to break open. No knockout punch until, well, look at that, almost going in on the alley-oop pass. And, and it was really, it would have been an easy play for Hill had that been thrown on the money. Bobby Hurley can't believe he misjudged that one. Not a pretty game at all. Well, like I said, the, like a championship fight with two over-aged and overweight fighters and no knockout below. They go 15 rounds, and you can't tell who gets the decision. Riley on the blocks, doubled up. Weber gets Leitner to commit, dumps it inside to Talley. Oh, great block by Cherokee Parks, the leading shot blocker in the two team. It'll beat Duke's basketball when we come back, and officials timeout. The Devils going for the repeat, leading by four. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Championship game, Big Ten versus ACC. Billy in field goal percentage in this half. Backs up what we were saying a moment ago. Well, Duke is a team that shoots right at 54% for the field, and Michigan right at 40, I mean 50%. Duke has not made a field goal in the last 442. Both teams do play hard-nosed defense to the point you don't get a lot of easy basket. But neither team has been fresh in a half-court offense. Leitner, three-pointer, his second of the half. Well, that was a good one. Nice follow-through by Christian Leitner. 13 points for Christian Leitner. Duke has its largest lead, a seven-point lead, and a foul on Parks, his third. Duke's fourth. Well, a, an experienced player in Riley who went through the Big Ten Wars last year as a starting postman, just getting better position than his Parks. Parks is trying, but Riley's using the edge in uh, experience. Rose comes back, Billy, with the four fouls, and Ray Jackson goes to the bench. Kind of surprised at that one. A little early to get Jalen in there. He fouls out, and they're really missing their leader down the stretch. I thought Steve Fisher would wait about the six-minute mark. Instead, 10.51 10, 10, to go. Real gamble here. Bosco. Oh, he had nine in the second half against Cincinnati. There's his first two, but a driving shot similar to what he made and was fouled on in the last game. And hit nine in seven minutes. Thomas Hill makes a shoot on Rose. Missing. Weber, no doubt about that rebound. His seventh. Thomas Hill ought to drive on Rose and not pull up with a jumper. Make him follow him all the way to the basket. Hill steals oh, it. Dude. Almost the fifth foul on Rose. Hurley. They can't buy a basket. Only the three by Leitner in the last six minutes. Hurley's three for 11 from the floor for the game. Isn't it amazing how much quicker Bosco seems than everybody on the floor? He's got the fresh legs. What we're seeing in the Duke team is a club that has really had the battle to get here, and they are just worn down. The lead had been seven a moment ago. It's down to three. Weber with 12 points. Mike Krzyzewski using a little clock here. Parks over Weber. Bosco. I thought the other 32 might get it, but Bosco gets the rebound. Leitner was too far under the basket. Leitner's trying to push himself to run, but he just has no legs. Michigan turns it over. 17 turnovers against the Wolverines as Lang and Howard return. And at the conclusion of this championship game, Billy and I will be selecting 
Chevrolet Players of the Game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Can we talk about the men's championship with the guys not having any legs? The women have to had to come back without the full day's rest, so our hats off have to go to Stanford for their conditioning. Lang in a jam out to Hill. Hurley, pump fake, sets up the two. What? Weber, Weber again, rolling the board. And Hurley reached in. And for Hurley, that's four on Hurley. Four on Hurley, four on Rose. Well, neither team really has a man that can replace Rose or Hurley, but you'd have to throw it back over to Michigan, assuming if something happened to Rose, at least they have Pally, who was a starting point guard in the Big Ten last year. So I'd say advantage Michigan. I wonder if Duke is going to try to go a little zone. Try to save somebody. There they're matching up in the zone. Rose off balance. Not a good shot. Hurley with the rebound all alone. What's this going to take away for Hurley is his ability to penetrate because he can't draw any charges. Duke has made one of its last ten shots. Leitner inside, working on Weber. Gets the fake, and he'll go to the line for two. He may have been better off shooting the first time after the fake. Well, he's so good at getting on that line. You can see Weber, who is going to... Tremendous head and shoulder fake by Leitner. And that's the third on Jawan Howard. Colonel Leitner will go to the line. That's what his teammates are calling him. He won all of these College Player of the Year awards and just recently was named the Rupp Award winner. And when you get the Rupp Award presentation, they make you a Kentucky Colonel. So kind of ironic with what he did to Kentucky this year. They call him Colonel on this Duke team now. Davis in for Hurley. Yeah. And Rob Palenka for Michigan is back. And, Jim, you can see what Mike Krzyzewski is going to do when Hurley went out this year, as we remember, with the injury to his foot. It was Grant Hill that went to the point guard position, which is what he's going to have to do tonight. But without Brian Davis, that means Hill really would have to play almost all the remaining minutes while Hurley sits down. So maybe that injury to Hurley in, during the season actually helped Duke because they experienced playing without him for a little bit. Give Leitner his due. He has come back with 10 points in the second half, and Duke leads by five. Good ball fake. Howard lines an open king in and out. Palenka keeps it alive. Obviously, the ball hit the rim, and therefore, the shot clock was set back at 45. Jimmy King to Palenka, blocked by Hill. Palenka tried to improvise with the left hand. Some block by Grant Hill. Hill, Hill, Leitner, and Davis, and then Lang on the court. And Mike Krzyzewski saying, I've got to rest my players by using this clock sum. We saw Mike Krzyzewski go to this strategy when Hurley got hurt. They did this an awful lot. So they learned a lot during that period of time this season. At one point, Grant Hill out. Another point, Hurley out. Billy, they take 30 seconds off the clock. Now they put it back in play with Hill missing on the drive. Look at Davis fighting for it with the sprained ankle on the floor. Rose at the other end. Gets the roll. Nine points for Jalen Rose. One of the things is tough is to complete a play when you go all the way in because Weber and Howard are so big inside. Timeout called by Duke. Under seven minutes to play. No one able to pull out with the big lead. It's now Duke by three. has made only one of its last 11 but still leads by three rose and hurley with four fouls each the michigan team had a guest speaker last week a motivational speech from bo schimbeckler he told him i didn't like you guys at first i didn't think you played with teamwork but you guys have now grown on me and go get it go win it for michigan christian leitner on a drive can't handle it we're gonna oh, what a finish. Hey, he is gutting it out here in the second half let's give him credit First half, he disappeared. He doesn't have his legs here tonight. 
but he's gotten it out with everything he's got. He has 12 of Duke's 20 in the second half. And Weber's taking a challenge on right now. He wants the ball down low against Leitner. Over the top, Leitner steals it. Puts him near that steal record. That's one shy of Mookie Blaylock. And by the way, Steve Fisher said to pass along best wishes to Millie Schimbeckler, who's been under the weather and said the whole team's thinking of her. 50-45 Duke with 6-10 to go. Palinka on Hurley. Hurley again, saddled with the four. Jim, before that basket by Leitner, Leitner uh, Duke had hit their first three shots in the half, and then they were two for 14 up to Leitner's shot thereafter. That's 14%, and they're still in the lead. Leitner, by the way, has scored their last seven points. Hill driving past nice everyone. Move again. Again. And he has, uh, he has the spin on it. And a great play, a smart play by Antonio Lang. He was going to go up to give that a little touch and pulled his hand back. There are going to be some tired fellas when this game is over. King, three-pointer. That's a push-off inside. I think it's going to be on Weber. It is on Weber. His fourth. Four on Weber, four on Rose. And that's number seven against Michigan. That'll put Duke on the line for a one and one. I think that was an ill-advised three by Jimmy King. Yeah, it was. He didn't seem real sure of it. He's kind of they're getting frustrated, and a lot of that is because Duke is playing great defense on their end of the floor. They're just not getting any easy shots. Remember the pass that Howard it was probably an ill-advised pass that Leitner picked off. We tried to go down inside on Weber. James Bosco signals for a Michigan timeout. Five seventeen to go. Duke with a seven-point lead, which mark matches its largest lead. Each team has used a timeout in this half. Two remaining for each. Duke has the arrow. Jim, what I think we're going to see out of Duke the rest of the way is they're going to pull that ball out, try to take 30 seconds or so off the clock on every possession. One and one for Leitner. And they are now back to what has become a Duke trademark. They have made more free throws than Michigan has shot. Leitner says, I've got a bad memory. I don't remember last year's championship. I want another one. And he hits two, and he is starting to take control of this game, Billy. Yeah, he's showing a lot of courage in this game. Coming off of that first half and coming back the way he is now. He has 19 points, and Duke with its largest lead of nine. Uh, Duke picking up their defense, man to man, and Howard banging Lang inside, as is Weber with Leitner. Bosco. Oh! Leitner blocked it. I think Leitner enjoyed getting up there on the boards on that one. Foul on Antonio Lang. His first. Jim, it's going to be really interesting to talk, regardless of the outcome of this game, to Christian Leitner afterwards and find out if he was physically or mentally drained at the start of this game because it was so unusual to watch him not follow his shots, not be able to get up in the air. And, and you know, sometimes the emotional strain of all these that all these kids have been through can just wear you out. You just don't have any any effort whatsoever available. Bosco, two shots. Michigan now with that free throw. Three points in the last five minutes. Bosco and Riley were red shirt freshmen on that 89 championship team. They sat on the bench in street clothes. Now trying to contribute to the Wolverines championship. And look tonight. at what happened. Michigan realized that Duke's going to try to occupy some time picking up full court. Boy, that's asking a lot of effort. Steve Fisher has his team well scouted. Leitner, ooh, Bosco almost had that one. Leitner called for it. He's doubled up, swings it over to an open Thomas Hill. Drives for the two. Tipped up. Oh, what a rebound by Thomas Hill. He really got off the ground on that play. Mike Juszewski loved it. 13 for Hill. Bosco, three-pointer. Oh. Oh, there was a push-off by Jimmy King. He knocked, Grant, he, he knocked Thomas Hill right under the basket and got away with it. Duke has possession and a nine-point lead with four minutes to go. And there's that 
front court scoring. Duke way up, 20 to 8, and there's what I was talking about. Take time off the clock, force Michigan to do all the chasing. The other thing this does is save Bobby Hurley from not getting in any further foul trouble. 15 of the 20 points you just saw front court scoring in the half for Duke. Coming from Leitner, who really is backing in on Howard. Set the screen now for Hill. Oh Mike Juszewski is exhorting his team on in the sidelines like a super jockey over there. He's got them going down a stretch again. Weber, tough shot, he made it. 3.15 to play. Steve Fisher's going to have to press full court as Duke is going to occupy this clock. He's got to come out and get him. They've got everything up high now. It's an opportunity for somebody to go back, back door for an easy layup. Hurley called a timeout. He was doubled up by Weber and King. Calls the timeout. Duke has only one timeout remaining. Duke led by Leitner's 19 points. First half, he had 5.7 turnovers. Second half, no turnovers and 14 points. What a turnaround, Billy. Uh, just a real great gut check by Christian Leitner, the player of the year. This is not unusual, however, because Duke, uh, Jim, on the year, has had 122 more assists than turnovers. And for Michigan, they have 37 more turnovers than assists. So Duke is playing to form here. Down to 14 seconds. Is the shot clock. Clear out. Rose has got a tough man. Got to watch his fifth. Hurley with under oh. five. Good block. Hill has to beat the clock by a second. And tipped up and in by Grant Hill. Grant Hill, three offensive tip-ins against Indiana with a crushing blow. And he comes up with one here. That's Big basket. Two putbacks tonight for Grant Hill. And nine rebounds. Double-digit lead for the Devils. Trying to get Bosco for a three. Stolen by Hill. Now Michigan really has to come out with some kamikaze pressure. Steve Fisher can't wait any longer. Under two. Under two to play. Lang is open. Lang for the jam. Timeout by Michigan. Each team is left with one timeout. The Devils are starting the celebration. This is how Duke saw it a moment ago. And Mike Krzyzewski was animated as well at that time. After the jam by Lang, a 13-point lead, 144 to play. They've got to be thinking threes here. Bosco's the man they'd like to take, and Howard with a long one. Grant, Grant Hill with Hill his 10th rebound. And Bobby Hurley just wants to use clock here. Thomas Hill will shoot free throws, fouled by Bosco. the eighth team foul. It'll be a one-on-one -one situation. Jim, kind of surprised that Steve Fisher doesn't start playing that game of a certain team for offense and a certain team for defense and figure out, like, Palinka's a three-point shooter, Bosco a three-point shooter, Jimmy King a three-point shooter. They've got to surround down there and go for threes. One-on-one and one for Hill. 13 points, seven rebounds. And that second number, Jim, is the one where he has played a huge game tonight. Called upon to go inside time and again to rebound, and he's come up with some great plays. Came to college as not one of the most heralded recruits, but has certainly become a valuable player for this team. Even played for the U.S. team in the summer, Billy. Big future, Thomas Hill. Weber with his 11th rebound. He has another double-double. Rose with a three. Tipped over the backboard. Duke basketball. Michigan has gone now almost nine minutes with only six points. Reach in on King. 
Still a one and one. That's the ninth team foul. The next foul situation will be a double bonus. We'll see two. Jim, one of the things about Mike Krzyzewski as a coach is this entire year, and I've watched him time and time again, game after game, he never talks about a negative. And I think that this team probably rode on his back tonight more than at any time in his coaching career when he went in and there at halftime. He just does not allow a team to quit. His team certainly didn't have it in the first half. He kept them in that locker room. You give a lot of credit to that fellow who is now going down in the history books with some of the great ones. Only the second coach to take five straight teams to the final four. And he'll join John Wooden. Wooden was the last to repeat. Michigan ball. Now what Duke could do is break Michigan's back now because Michigan is sending five men to the boards. All Duke should do is tap the ball long and they'll find Bobby Hurley alone for a layup. Weber. Rose. Now, Rose is kicking the ball. He's and the clock's still moving. The clock is moving. Now the referee called the time, so that was not a wise thing for Rose to do. His shot dropped through with a minute and one second to play, and took away about six seconds on the clock. Oh, Pass with nothing on it. Riley could have picked it off. Thomas Hill will shoot two. That's ten team fouls. Repeat winners, UCLA. Well, so many times in that remarkable stretch. Cincinnati, Bill Russell in San Francisco, Kentucky, and they were known as Oklahoma A&M back in 45 and 46. <laughs> Jim, one of the strangest championship games that I've had an opportunity to witness there's a man here tonight in the crowd by the name of Jack Gardner that took two teams, two different teams, twice to the final four in the championship. Utah and, and Kansas Utah and State. Kansas State actually was uh, the coach of the Kansas State team that lost to Kentucky, and he has seen every single final four. There may be somebody else in this arena that has, but that's some record. Wonderful man, Jack Gardner. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer, age 82. Jason Bossard for Michigan. We'll see some minutes. And Mike Krzyzewski seeing what Steve Fisher is going to do. I think he may counter likewise. Nonetheless, the final seconds of Christian Leitner's career coming to a close. His jersey will never be worn again. It's already been retired. And here comes Duke on the break. Behind the back, Hurley to Hill. Why not? That's the play that was available. Nobody back for Michigan because they're sending five to the board. Rose. Leitner flips it back, burns some time, and King back to the front court. See what Mike Krzyzewski is saying is foul because can Hurley not even in the one and one yet. Set him up. Yep. And a timeout called by Duke. He wanted to get the other players in, Jim. That's why he called the timeout. Not to rub it into Michigan.
with that neck operation several months back. First time we've seen her smile, she sends a kiss down to Christian Leitner, who has checked out of the game, and number 32 will never be worn on the floor again for the Duke Blue Devils. Jersey has points, been retired. A 2,000 point score, a 1,000 rebounds. At Duke University, certainly one of the great all-time players in college basketball history, and I'm so happy for him at what happened in the second half. That first half, it was uh, had to be a nightmare for Christian Lee. Well, they wouldn't have made it to the Final Four two times in his career if it wasn't for his heroics. Exactly, and you can see the Fab Five now starting to realize what it takes to get over that hump to be the national crown. The game is over. The Duke of Destiny has won it. For the first time in two decades, college basketball has a repeat champion. the celebration back from camera Duke is the 1992 national champion well Duke's championship run in 1991 began right here at the Metrodome with first and second round victories and now back-to-back -back victories and it ends the second half right back at the same spot Mike what about tonight's game uh, terrific defense in the second half and uh, Bobby Hurley and Grant Hill played great games for us and so did Thomas Christian had his worst half of the year, but then as a true veteran, he comes back in the second half and kind of leads us. But our defense in the second half, I think, was a story. Christian really did lead you in the second half, but we were all wondering at halftime if there was something physically wrong with him. No, I don't know if it's just the emotion of going through this whole thing. He was not himself. Seven turnovers, are you kidding me? Uh, he was throwing up bricks, and we were only one point down. So we knew if we could turn up the emotion and get him back in the ball game, that we would have a shot at him. Well, he came back with 14 points in the second half. Billy? Man, I want to ask you, here comes Chris Jones. Great going. Thanks. I want to ask both of, you, both of you fellas. We sat there, I, as I imagine Mike did, in, in amazement. Were you fellas emotionally spent or physically spent in that first half? Has it been that big a drain on you guys? No, I don't think it's been a big drain on us. Um, I think Michigan had a lot to do with our uh, poor play in the first half. We were making shots. I was playing real weak. We weren't rebounding. And uh, in the second half, we came out. We did a better job. And we weren't emotionally spent physically or mentally. We just, Michigan was playing real well. So I would imagine at the halftime that Coach put on you must have been uh, one that was rather physical. <laughs> well, Coach, just all he did was challenge us at halftime. Uh, just go out there and play 20 minutes tough. But we weren't playing hard in the first half. And we were making a lot of mental mistakes. So we just tried to come out, come out, play hard. You know, we knew Michigan was going to play hard. And, uh, I'm just so happy we came through in the stress. Christian, we've got uh, Bill Walton in our truck. He was watching the game. You're the first guy since uh, Walt that's been able to take a team to back-to-back. -to -back. What does that feel like? Well, thank you. It means a lot. Um, you know, the most important thing is that it's the, it's the Duke team. And uh, we got the second national championship last year. We had to work real hard to get the first one. It's just the best feeling to go out your last game at Duke on a winning note. Congratulations, guys. guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Duke again, the national champions. And all the best to you, Mike. Terrific job. And let's go now over to Pat O'Brien. All right, thank you, Jim. And our Chevrolet players of the game, Grant Hill, who stepped up big for Duke, and Chris Weber of Michigan, our Chevrolet players of the game. And uh, 
dear Mrs. Leitner, we're sorry we questioned uh, your son at halftime, but he stepped up too. He answered every question in the second half, got him right out of the box well, and Grant Hill, who will emerge as one of the top players in all of college basketball next season, Pat, especially with Leitner gone, had an immense game. He had to step up, as we said in the pregame. He was able to do that. You told me at the hotel Grant Hill would step He's the up guy. tonight. As for Christian, better Leitner than ever, That's huh? True. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, the trophy presentation is coming up after a commercial that'll work for your local station. Stay with us here. We're having fun now. <laughs> National champions again, the Duke uh, Blue Devils over Michigan by 20 points, and the players are on the platform. The ladder is underneath the net. Somebody with the scissors there. They'll be cutting that one down again, as you see Christian Leitner, who got back into this game in a very big way in the second half, Mike. No question about it, Pat. This is now a modern-day basketball dynasty. People don't realize just how difficult it is to do what this Duke team has done the past two years. I actually saw Bobby Hurley smile down there. <laughs> he likes this one. Let's go down now to our public address announcer, Frank Phelan, for the presentation. Your attention, please, to present the championship awards tonight. Here is the chairman of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, Mr. Roy Kramer. It gives me a great deal of privilege tonight to congratulate these two great teams, as well as the other 62 teams who have given us so many magic moments over the past two weeks in this great tournament. And now tonight, it's my privilege to present the 1992 NCAA Championship Trophy to Duke University and Coach Mike Krzyzewski. Listen, first of all, I want to thank the people of the city of Minneapolis for putting on a great tournament. Secondly, I want to congratulate a great team that came in second, but they, they had a fantastic season, the, the Michigan Wolverines. Lastly, I want to thank our fans, and I want to thank... The parents and the families of our, fam of our kids, and most of all, I want to thank my team for, for winning this. Uh, they, they've been a great group to go number one the whole season long, and I'm very, very proud of them. Thank you. There's a winner and there is a loser. When we come back, we'll hear from Steve Fisher. In a situation like this, there is really winning and misery. There is nobody who really loses a game like this. Steve Fisher came up short tonight. James Brown spoke to the coach of the five sophomores. All right, Coach, it seemed to be a little difficult finding a flow offensively. Was that more Duke's defense or what you guys just couldn't get going? Uh, I think it was Duke. Uh, they took us out of any semblance of, uh, of ardor, and uh, they made us put the ball to the floor quicker than we wanted to. Uh, our shots, we had some good shots early that we didn't make. That led to them getting conversion baskets and easy opportunities at the other end. And uh, then a great team uh, took a, a really good team uh, to task down the stretch. I mentioned at halftime that there should have been some concern on your part about Christian Leitner, who has such a horrible first half, but came back stronger, and it wasn't because of any uh, physical injuries. Well, we played good defense, uh, James, in the first half. I, I was really pleased with uh, the way we sunk and filled, and, and they had 12 turnovers. Uh, we got tired, I think, a little bit. Uh, Leitner's not going to uh, lie down and not play, and he's a great, great player, and uh, they're a terrific team. My hands You're off to them. Your freshmen have said all year, Coach, that you and your staff have helped to educate them and to learn from each game, especially losses. What will you tell them tonight? 
Well, uh, cry. That's part of it. And, and feel awful. Uh, but be proud of what you've done. And be determined that you're going to learn from this game and set your sights as high next year as what you had this year. And there's a reason for you to be as proud as well, Coach. Congratulations on a good run. Thank you. And it is okay to cry, happiness and sadness. Let's go down to what sounds like a uh, law firm, but really three people are pretty good basketball heads. Nance, Hurley, and Packer, gentlemen. And uh, Hurley is the most valuable player of the tournament. Bobby, how does this one compare to last year? Well, it just keeps getting better each time, and uh, it's just a great feeling that we were able to be so resilient out there. It wasn't the prettiest game, but we got the job done. Bobby, you're the first guy that's admitted to us that you were like running in wet cement. Uh, what did it feel like out there? You guys just drained? I think so. I mean, for me personally, three halves of basketball, I had my legs, and then the second half, they were just gone. I think it was, it was kind of like that for most of the guys. Well, you're not the MVP. You're the mop, the most outstanding player. Congratulations. Right, thank you very much. We'll Bye. see you next year, Bobby. Only a junior. We'll come back and close out our look at the 92 season with our anthem. One shining moment when we come back. You know what? Not just because I'm from South Dakota in the Midwest, but I'm going to miss Minneapolis. We've been here a lot this year, and it's been some uh, couple of weeks, huh? It really has. We tipped the tournament with the question, can anybody beat Duke? There were some anxious moments, especially against Kentucky, but the answer now, a resounding no. I haven't asked this all tournament. Did you have Duke in your bracket? I think everybody did. Pat, you can get rid of this now. <laughs> you know, it is. Look at mine. It is time to file away this old, wrinkled, coffee-stained piece of paper, the old bracket sheet has been a faithful roadmap through three weeks and 63 games. And now it's time to start wondering about a new set of issues, like will those veterans in Toronto finally get it done, or will Cincinnati's pitching hold up? Or around here, can the Twins repeat? So as we close out another season of college hoops, let us salute not just the Blue Devils of Duke University, but also the 800 or so young men who will be able to say to their kids, your daddy was part of something special. Keep in mind, however, that the game is not basketball. The game is life. But while they were making life plans, here came the tournament, and with it, more than a few shining moments. Thank you for sharing them with us, and as we say farewell to the Twin Cities, we'd like to recognize all the good folks here at CBS who brought you the sights and sounds of the tournament. And speaking for them, we hope you've enjoyed the show. I'm Pat O'Brien. We'll see you around the batting cage. Good night, everybody.